This video may start off with a little bit of shimmer because these are industrial LED string lights used for things like trees in public areas. And they're really ruggedized. They're designed to be used en masse. So these are an extendable set. I'm going to turn this off before the flicker annoys you. Uh, but these are an extendable set. You get a five meter run with 250 LEDs. And then at the end, you can just basically take this cap off and you can pop another string in. Rather oddly, this particular brand is Eagle and they're not as compatible with the other strings I've got by other brands. This is the first one that seems to be not compatible with the standard sizing system and also rather meanly they've swapped the polarity. So this particular uh, version, it's the cluster type with very close points of LEDs. And these look great if you put a uh, waterproof connector on the end and you basically plug it in at the top of a lamppost and spiral these round and cable tie at a few points so that it just forms a big clump of lights down the, the lamppost. It looks very good. It's one of their best uses for these. The particular colour of these is sort of antique copper gold or something. Um, and it's it's a nice golden retro tungsteny colour like the old underrun uh, tungsten lights. Right, okay. So you what, let's brighten the let's brighten things up a little bit. Yeah that's better. That was a bit too dim, but it started off really bright. So at the other end of this string of lights is a connector, and then you have to buy this separately when you buy these lights. You have the mains lead with a bridge rectifier in it. Now, normally I'm used to the bridge rectifiers being injection molded on. This one is a little box that it looks sealed, but um, I've had issues in the past with industrial lights with uh, the low voltage ones with water getting into rectifier boxes and basically dissolving all the contacts away. I wonder how waterproof this one is. I fear I may have to break it before the end of the video. And that means I'll have to order another cable if I ever want to use these lights, which I'm not sure I will. But anyway, let's plug them into the analyzer. There is a limit to how many sets of Christmas lights you can have. Handy to have sets spare for commercial purposes. So I plug this in, and there's the little lights off the edge. Not flickering this time. Okay, because it's uh, set to a longer exposure now. Uh, the current of the string, which I know has four sections of LEDs, is 69 milliamps, so say 70 milliamps, which is pushing towards the 20 milliamps per section, which means they're pushing these LEDs quite hard. I wonder how long they're going to last. The power factor is amazing at 0.945. That's because they're using resistors to limit the current. And then the power of the string is roughly um, 4 watts per section. So the total 250 LED string is 16 watts, which is good. It means that you can plug a lot of these strings end to end. Like, I'm not sure what the limit is on this. Does it say how many you can put end to end? Um, does it say? It may have data on that not immediately seeing it, but you can plug a lot end to end, but I don't recommend that because if one set fails or you have a connector gets uh, water in it while someone's putting it together in the rain, it can cause problems and you lose a lot of lights. I recommend dividing it into smaller sections. So if we take a look at the construction of these, they are potted. They've got the thick rubber cable. They've got the HO5 rubber cable, which is a uh, in sort of rated for outdoor use, it's very resilient to weather. They've got the rubber cable continuing along with these strings of lights, with the bus bar of the plus and minus rectified voltage going along at full mains volts. In this case, it's 240 volts. Um, but then they've got the, the cluster string going along and tapping in at specific points, and it's different from normal. But where the the wires go in and where you get the LEDs, they've actually got little resin cups. If I zoom down this, you'll see, actually, I don't need to zoom down this. I can show you an actual picture of the resin cup. Wouldn't that be better? Here we go. There's a picture. I will zoom down on this. So the cables come in and they're soldered to the LED and then it's filled with resin and the LEDs are plunged in. It must be messy. I wonder how that is done in the factory because uh, if you've ever tried doing this yourself, it's just, it makes a mess. The cup's slithering off. Everything would have to be locked in place. There is the resistor. And there's typically about eight resistors in each section of these LEDs. And I can prove that with a thermal imaging uh, camera image. So there's a, a small, looks like eighth watt resistor. And uh, so we've got the cable coming in, going 
via that resistor through the LED going out in another cable and then going along the, the string of lights like that until it gets to a junction. Here's the thermal imaging camera image. I'll have to do it short vertically. Um, because, yeah, I'll have to zoom out and short vertically because uh, it took the picture vertically with the text vertically and there's no choice about that. So we can see these glowing ones are the ones of resistors. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the only deviation from that is the last section of the string, which is slightly less LEDs. And for that one, they've used nine resistors in that just to compensate for the smaller number of LEDs. Okie dokie. That also made it very handy to find which one to cut the sleeving off, as I did for that picture. Now, if we take a look at the way these are wired, and let me zoom down in this. The normal approach, actually I can zoom in a lot more because I ended up I ended up having to redraw this because something took me by surprise. Here's the mains AC incoming supply. And the first thing it does is it hits that bridge rectifier here on the cable. Then there's a DC bus comes out, it goes to a connector, and when it plugs into the connector, just to save the number of wires going into the LEDs here, they have a couple of wires going into, they, they typically have three wires going into the plugs. One, uh, say the common positive going out to the rest of the string, and then just one going out to the end that was convenient. And then the other connection will just duck in and out again, and they'll do that all the way along the string. And it's notable that each time there's a uh, separate section, it will go from being three wires, one, two, and the one that's running inside these uh, series circuits. It will just briefly go down to two, and then it will step back up to three again. And I was looking for that, and I did not see it. And it turns out this string is doing it completely differently. They've got the strings in alternate directions, and they actually put four wires into one LED, which is pretty darn cramped. I don't know why they did that. Hold on. Can I find it? Hold on. Let me just uh, rifle through the LEDs until I find that one. Yeah, that's fairly congested, isn't it? They That must be a joy to solder that one and then stuff it into the resin. But uh, that is what they have done. And three of the wires are going to the positive and one is going to the negative to actually loop onto the next section of the string. So what they've done in this instance is the positive has run along and then it's just gone up and it's not just uh, fed that section of lights, but it's fed that section of lights too and then it's looped and gone on. And it may look initially like it means the negative just can go all the way along one straight line, but in reality, because there's four sections, it will also have to duck in and out. But that's odd that they've done it that way. It's the first time I've seen it. It must make it more complex, the fact that one string points one way and one string points the other. And uh, at no point do you go down to the two wires. Very strange. I wonder why they did that. They must have had a good reason. It just seems like it would make it harder to manufacture. Um, I don't know the value of the resistors because, as you may have seen, they just weren't marked. The resistor is blank. Um, I guess maybe they just used tons of resistors and they've got a standard value on the 120 volt sets. They use less resistors and less LEDs. I don't really know. Um, but let me show you now. Well, let's tell you what. Let's open that rectifier. I'll show you one of the other rectifiers, right? Tell you what, I'll pause and I'll crack that rectifier open and we'll take a look inside and see if it is potted. But I'll also show you one of the injection molded ones and some of the adapters you get for actually joining these strings of lights together in more interesting formats. One moment, please. Okay, it took a bit of force, but it is now open and inside is a uh, silicone type uh, soft rubbery potting compound. So it is potted inside there. That's good. And the lid is just basic. Well, the lid is presumably glued on as well, but water could still get in here. However, um, it's not going to get down to the diodes. And the diodes are actually kind of semi-visible. You can see them as humps. And I scoop down to this one. Let me just zoom down this. Uh, it's fairly large, I'd guess, three amp diodes, probably on a circuit board with the wires terminated and then the circuit whole circuit board assembly is pushed in and then potted. And then the lid clipped on with a bit of adhesive. Uh, that is different to the other ones, like, uh, what brand is this? Let me just check what brand this is. I shall zoom out again because this is monstrous. This brand is Benross. 
which is very similar to the transcontinental. I wonder if they're all manufacturing. I wonder if they're all getting from the same manufacturer. Maybe, maybe you'll recognize this logo because this is the rectifier from this manufacturer. Hold on, let's uh, get down on that logo. Do you recognize the logo in there? Dunno. A strange curvaceous. Um, and it looks like it says I high or L high? Not really sure. Strange. Anyway, these ones are injection molded around the diodes. Now let me show you the various adapters that could be used for joining these. I'll just clear this off the table. One moment, please. Random adapters, not compatible with the ecosystem, but compatible with Premier, Benross, and seemingly Transcontinental. I wonder if they are all a common brand. Anyway, what you have here is a splitter that, suppose you get a string of LEDs and you power it at the bottom of the tree, and then you run the string extended if necessary up to the top of the tree. At the top of the tree, you can then plug the end of that string into this and then fan out into five more strings and then just continue dressing them down the tree to decorate the tree. This is designed for big municipal trees. For a smaller scale application, you have one input and three outputs. And where you've got those light curtains dangling down from mill street lights or municipal buildings down the front of them or large shops, the way they do that is with a bus bar strip. So the bus bar strip is basically a cable with multiple outputs and you get your either your power supply with the rectifier feeding the end of this and then you can cascade it on to more. You can run quite large sections. I think they run too many sections in some instances. But then along it, it's got loads of random sockets. And you'll notice these little uh, cables that kind of get in the way of these little ties. These are just to make sure the caps don't get lost. So that at the end of the season, you can actually cap them up and uh, keep things waterproof. That's good. But if you want to fit into a specific size like we used to do between the banner drops on George Square, you get uh, a closer spacing or you can just basically just put it up like this and then cable tie it onto the catenary at the top of the uh, drop and then just run all your strings down with a bit of support in the middle so they don't just all tangle up together. But what if you want something more specific or you needed to just extend it just a little bit more? You could add just individual sockets end to end, power in, uh, drop to a string of lights and power out to the next section so you could then uh, connect another one of these and makes it a custom looms. There's a lot of stuff available. It's quite versatile and quite annoying that that uh, Ego set is not compatible with the, the fairly universal system. Maybe they've just done that to force you to use their special stuff. But that's it. Super heavy industrial strings of, uh, of Christmas lights. I don't even know what colour these ones are. Hold on, I'm going to plug them in. Are they going to flicker and shimmer? Oh, they're mixed colour. Okay. Um, very rugged, uh, a very versatile system. Now, I don't know, is that Eagle system out on its own? It, are there other systems compatible with that, or is it just forging its own route? But there we have it. Uh, you'll see these everywhere now, because it's Christmas, and they're just uh, they're going to be over all the panels that you see hanging from streetlights. But that's it. Big rubbery strings of Christmas lights for industrial use. Um, pretty good. We got a lot of years of service out of uh, many of the sets we used. They, they were extremely weather resilient. Very good because of the black rubber just made them super long lasting. 